Mike, hey, how you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you guys? Doing well, man. Doing well. Um, so first, let's get your thoughts on the uh, the game on Saturday. It's just you just don't see a lot of games where you possess the ball for more than 12 minutes. Then the opponent uh, you outgain them by, gosh, it's not that far from a two to one margin. <laughs> So a lot. If you're looking at the box score independent of the final score, you would be convinced that Arkansas won the football game. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, it, it doesn't make sense unless you understand those three turnovers were like, each one of them was like a dagger. I'm not sure I've ever seen a game in which you have those three turnovers and have such an impact on the game, and that's got all the fans mad. But And I, I don't have any issue with that. I do have an issue with a lot of these fans saying, well, that – Oklahoma State's not really that good anyway, and, and and you should have beat them even if you had turnovers, and they're saying all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, you know, Sam Pittman addressed some of these issues in his press conference today, started talking off talking about the kicker, uh, you know, and there's been a kicking battle between these two transfers, and he said in the past he thinks it's a case of nerves. They kicked fine before they got here, and I guess they're kicking okay in practice, but when you get in the game, it's like changes them. And he said, you know, I, I agree that it's pretty hard. If somebody has that issue, it's pretty hard to simulate in practice what they're going to face in a game, especially. I think it probably hurt that everybody liked the fact that Arkansas had 10 offensive touchdowns in 10 possessions, you know, against UAPB, but you did not put your kicker in any position to kick field goals. And I think, Maybe that would have helped if he'd kicked a few last uh, the first week. Uh, all they can do, I guess, is go back to the drawing board and try and put figure out a way in, pr- in practice to put pressure on these guys. I know in the Stone Ages when I played, if we had a kicker that had a problem, coaches would periodically stop practice, line everybody up, have the kicker kick a field goal. If he missed, they'd make all of us run, and everybody gets mad at the kicker. And then we'd go back and practice some more, and then he'd do it over again. They just kept exposing the guy over and over again to a pressure situation. So I, I, I assume Pittman has ways of, of putting pressure on him like that, but that's, to me, the answer to that situation. And, it, guys, in every respect, I think this team is better than it was a year ago, except, obviously, at kicker. And that's going to be a problem down the road Somebody told me last night, and I agree with it, they're going to lose another at least one more game down the road if they don't solve this kicking problem. So there's that. Um, he addressed this fumbled punt uh, by Satinia, and I have defended Pittman on that. I don't know how you can blame him for that. I mean, you've got your a, a solid guy back there uh, catching punts that doesn't have a history of dropping the ball, but people have pointed out, well, he had Arkansas's own players around him, and on, on the drop punt, somebody was down at his feet and kind of impacted him a little bit. Um, and he said today that Satania himself has to do a better job of verbally letting the players around him know that he's signaling fair catch. They can't always see his hand up. So he's got to yell it out. So that was interesting. One of the other issues that I noticed, guys, was that while they did a great job of stopping Oklahoma State's running game, they didn't get much of a pass rush. And he addressed that a little bit, saying that Landon Jackson is getting double teamed and chipped, and that's kind of taking him out of the equation. So they're going to have to figure out a solution to that because if other teams look at the video and see how successful that is, they're going to do it too. Um, And then the other thing guys that I remember was in that it was actually the play that ended the game where you're in a second overtime and you got a fourth and one, you got to make a fourth down and Rodney Hill gets the ball. He's your smallest running back. Where was Braylon Russell? And I can only conclude that they just didn't feel like he had enough experience to be put in that situation. But Pittman did today say he's got to get in the game early uh, this week. And I mean, it's a good game to put him in because it's, you know, you're at home. You're not. You're not going up against a, you know, a tough power four team or whatever. So I expect we'll see more of him. Um, on the problems that Taylor Green had, kind of with the snap, a lot of people, as I was watching that game and reading the internet, they were blaming it on him. They said he wasn't focused. He was looking ahead of himself and not really securing the ball. Uh, 
Pittman basically said the snaps came out too low and too hard. The snapper has to understand that he's snapping to a 6'7 quarterback, not somebody 6'2". So I guess they'll address that. So those are all the things that he talked about in terms of making corrections uh, so that this doesn't happen again. Yeah, we, we kind of beat ourselves, and, and, and that's what everybody's saying, and we, we saw it. And, and people that don't think Oklahoma State's a real football team, that is a real football team. They, they got some real talent on their team. On our side of the ball, just, just speaking with Arkansas, and, and you brought it up a little bit, getting a pass rush, they had 48 pass attempts, and we, we couldn't get to the quarterback. That being said, I loved how our D-backs flew around. I love how our D-backs tackled. There's a lot of good to take from this game. It just stinks that we took an L. Yeah, and again, once again, you, you giving, you're giving fodder to those people that want to repeat the same talking points over and over again. And one of them is Sam Pittman can't win one-possession games. And I think that's oversimplistic, an oversimplistic explanation of things. I think you can't just make a general statement. You have to look back and say, okay, why did you lose this one possession game? Why did you lose that game? This game wasn't lost the way those others were, especially last year. Last year they tended to have no offense late in the game. And, even in the, and, and I remember going all the way back to Pittman's second year. They were saying, oh, he gets a lead and he sits on it. They, they shut things down. They get more conservative. Well, what happened in this game is that I just think for one thing, Oklahoma State made some really good adjustments. I think they went in the locker room and saw what what Arkansas was doing. Uh, they, uh, I think they were moving in the running game. I think he was heading toward a hole in front of him and then cut to the to the weak side, and they there was no coverage out there. Well, they covered it out, up in the second half, so it took some of that away. But I still feel like when you look overall – at this team, Arkansas is second in the nation in total offense right now. Second in passing. That's in the nation. They're, everybody talks about, well, they, they didn't score enough. Well, they're ninth in scoring nationally. And, uh, you know, Green is 11th in passing. Jackson's 13th in rushing. You didn't have those stats last year. So that is something to be encouraged about. They just got, they've just got to eliminate the turnovers. Did he? Did he mention? I'm. I'm sorry, Phil. Did he mention anything about 17? Our our D back that had the concussion. Is he okay? Because Hudson I, Clark. Yeah, that that I, I like his game. And when he went out, that's you know he he's such a such a guy we need on the field. Did Did he mention him? He did. Uh, he's saying it's some kind of a back issue. He did point out that he did come back and play, even though he had that problem. But yes, he's having an MRI to see what's mm. going on with his back. Well, here's a reason why, and this is how, this is where we can end on this, Mike. <clears throat> this, this, I think there's a number of reasons why it looked like they're a better football team. Top of the list, Taylor Green. I, the, the dude can play. I mean, I, I can't wait to see him go up against SEC teams because you, you saw the arm strength. Um, look, I mean, he missed a couple of open guys. Again, that's Maybe that just goes along with the territory from it, but he's a playmaker, and it looks like he's got something with Armstrong. I mean, I think it's a, I think he got a big upgrade at quarterback, and if you upgrade there, man, I mean, you should be, you should win some football games. Well, I said on our pregame show, and I still believe this, even though they surprised me. They played, they were better than I thought they'd be, but I felt like this team had too many new parts to it: new, new offense, new offensive coordinator, new quarterback new starting running back, three new guys in the offensive line. I felt like this was too much of a test against a really good, experienced team. I mean, Oklahoma State's the opposite of Arkansas. They had, you know, they had 17 returning starters. Their offensive line, the most experienced offensive line in the country. They had all these returning guys. And Sam Pittman said last week, we're not going to beat them with them making mistakes because they won't. And they didn't do the things that Arkansas did. But – that doesn't shock me that Arkansas had some of these issues because I felt like you're going and p- putting yourself in a pressure situation on the road t- too early in what they're trying to do. I think what I would look for is for this team to continue to settle down, solve problems, and in Taylor Green's case, I think he came here knowing that he had some issues. And he came here because Bobby Petrino said, I can fix these things for you, working with you. 
And so that's what we need to look at is see him continue to improve. And I, I agree with you. I, I think two or three games down the road, this guy could end up being really, really salty. Um, he's just got so much ability, and he's just got to stabilize himself. He's got to continue to learn to 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 play in pressure situations. I mean, it, it's like what Calipari said when he was talking to the, those guys in practice uh, last summer. He said, you have to learn – to become comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I think that applies to Taylor Green. He has to learn to settle in to the uncomfortable nature of being under pressure, the kind of pressure he wasn't in last year because he didn't play in games like this. He didn't play in stadiums like that. We'll leave it there, Mike. Appreciate you making time for us today. Thanks a lot. Okay, see you guys. Thanks, Mike. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.